Howdy guys, getting ready to roll. I like it, I think this is a great way to spend your lunch time. Fortunately, I usually end up eating lunch early so I can spend my afternoon this way. <laughs> All right, we're gonna give everybody just a couple more minutes to log in. And, oh, Center Negative is saying that it's SketchUp Live or free pizza. I understand that, that's, that's a rough one. <laughs> I guess that's where, that's where my, I'm a little in a different spot because I've missed out on chili and baking competitions. Well, I guess it's not competitions, but free baked foods because of this. Uh, Casey is gonna hang out with us today. Dave's wondering who's hanging out with us. Hello. It is, that is rough, I don't know. If you can watch it on mobile, you could probably eat your pizza while you watch, so maybe that's it. We're solving problems here, that's what we do. <laughs> Best of both worlds. Where's everybody, where's everybody co coming in from? We're, we're already, uh, let's see, we're already over 100 people on here. Mac and cheese loaded with bacon. See, that's, I mean, is there anything bacon can't fix? Carlos is calling in from Brazil. All right. Uh, Bruce Beatty has tasked you with keeping me on the straight and narrow, so you got something to do today, Casey. Yeah, I'll do my best. <laughs> Bruce is also calling in from Canada, Southern California, where the free pizza's at. Charles from British Columbia. Christopher Morin's in Connecticut. I didn't know that, Christopher. It's good to know. And you will see, hopefully you did catch that last week's uh, recorded video did eventually work. It took, it took some time, but we did. Eventually, YouTube got the problem fixed. Lithuania. New Zealand. Um, oh, bacon, that bacon mac and cheese just keeps giving with sour cream and green onions. Welcome, Mike. Glad you're looking forward to this. Norbert's coming in from Serbia. Wow, we're, we're all over the place again. We're, we're a worldwide thing once again. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Friday Afternoons. We're going to do some live modeling in SketchUp. Thank you so much for joining us. I uh, mentioned it earlier, but official introduction. On the other side of the monitor day, Casey is back with us. So say hi again. Hello. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, last week we did the Space Needle, and some people caught... Uh, it, it gets watched, rewatched a lot on YouTube, and there was a problem where our three hour and 20 minute video, uh, when you hit play, it started and played a two hour chunk in the middle, and you couldn't watch either end. So uh, I did, we, we, we called, talked to YouTube, and they, they admitted that there was something wrong, and they fixed it. So we're good now. Um, Dave Richards is in snowy Minnesota. It's a good time to just sit back and, and watch live modeling then, Dave. You're in the perfect situation. <laughs> uh, uh, Vitaly has a question before we get started about preparing a model for upload in vector format without further work in Illustrator. Um, I would say my one thing would be make sure you're going through layout to do that because layout you can very easily control your much better way to get your vector output than it is uh, exporting line work from just SketchUp because then you're doing basically a DXF in 2D and uh, if you're doing that then you should have less cleanup issues. Um, yeah, unfortunately center negative. The, the, is, he's saying that, talking about last week's, one of the coolest parts was those three legs because there's nothing in plane. There's a section in the middle that's flat. Other than that, they kind of curve both directions, both planes. So it was, it was a cool one. But now if you go watch that video from last week, you can actually see that happen. 
Okay, so we are gonna make something. So uh, it's kind of a big deal right now, The Mandalorian. I don't know how many people out there are watching it. Um, I am, Casey hasn't seen it yet, so I'm gonna try to respect that. And only talk about the stuff that everybody's already seen on social media. You can't avoid it completely, no matter how hard you try. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it, though. It's on my to watch list over uh, Christmas. There you go. That's, it'll be a perfect Christmas present to yourself. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so when we say Mandalorian helmet, I do, what I'm going to draw from is the helmet that the main character wears. The, they don't, not, again, try not to ruin anything, but they don't say his name, at least in the first episodes that we've seen. We just, they just call him the Mandalorian or Mando, which I kind of feels like supposed to be slurry, but uh, eh, this is the way. So I don't know. So we're going to, uh, I'm gonna, I got some reference images of that picture. We did this once before, I did Iron Man's helmet, which I don't think I was fully prepared for doing Iron Man's helmet because we, it got done, but it wasn't really a very good solid. Um, I kind of printed it as, or modeled it as a shell and then tried to just use joint push pull to add thickness and that didn't work perfectly. So um, I wanna model this one planning ahead to make this 3D printable. So we're gonna model this as a solid from the start. We're also gonna do, play a little trick with scale to make sure that uh, we don't have any problem. I do wanna model this as smooth as possible, so that means it mean high poly. So we will model it at scale larger than normal uh, so we don't have any issues with small face creation. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, we will, we will stay away. <laughs> Alexander's saying no spoilers. Absolutely not. No, we'll just talk about how cool the armor is, which is safe, I think. Maybe a comment here and there about how cute Baby Yoda is, because come on. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, I think I got Disney Plus like the week after it released, something like that. And uh, I didn't even realize at the time I had seen pictures of Baby Yoda on social media before I ever even saw an episode. It just, it's there. It's like, <laughs> it's like the sky being blue. Baby Yoda's on the internet. So, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. I'm just gonna hop right in. Uh, I did just so you guys know. I did create a forum thread. So there is a live modeling the Mandalorian's helmet forum forum thread on forums.sketchup.com. If you do have anything you need to pass to me. That's the place, that's actually on the monitor up here that I'm looking at that's not my normal monitor. So if something comes up, I'll see it. Uh, if uh, you wanna pass me a file, then putting it here means I can actually just download it directly. So not that I think we'll need a whole lot, but uh, here, we, we, may, we may get into needing some details at some point, but we'll get into that. All right, so I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna go import. All right, I just, hold on, I wanna take a mental picture of this. Nobody's telling me to save my file on the comment stream right now. It's the only time that it'll look like this. <laughs> All right, <laughs> moving on. Desktop. Uh, so I downloaded, I think this is a picture of like uh, from a website where they're selling replicant, replicas of, of the helmet, but it's very good straight on inside images. So I'm going to import a bunch of these. I'm going to import the front one. Just gonna double click to lay it on the ground. Import. The nice thing about the Mandalorian's helmet is unlike Boba Fett, Boba Fett was actually asymmetrical. His two, the ear pieces were actually different on both sides. One of them had the antenna rangefinder thing, uh, but they were actually both different. The Mandalorians are actually, it's the exact same uh, thing, whatever this ear thingy is. It's the same on both sides. So it's kind of good because we don't really even have to bring in a left and right. We can just bring in one side. Uh, and then I'm gonna import also from the desktop, the back. There we go. So there are our three views that we're primarily going to model from. Um, so I wanna do a couple things right here just before we even get started. So one of the things I was thinking about, I, I gotta admit, I told you guys this before that I try not to think too much. Well, in general, I try to make that just a, something I do. But 
I try not to think ahead too much on how to design stuff because I think the design process is part of what's fun about this is we get to figure out how we're gonna use it, what tool's best for this or that. Um, that's where you guys get to, to kind of weigh in and, and help me out with those decisions. Um, this time I did just because of the, for two reasons. One is I really do want to 3D print this. My goal is to get a 3D printable, a set of 3D printable solids out of this model today that I can print over the next week and then next Friday actually show you guys a, a finished helmet or at least the pieces of it. I don't know if I'll be able to actually finish it and make it shiny and all that, but uh, at least get it printed. Because of that and because I kind of bit myself a little bit last time, um, I did think ahead on this a little bit. I didn't model anything, but I did kind of play around with some things to make sure that I could really actually get this thing done the way we're looking at. Um, <laughs> Center Negative said, I've, I've already been talking too long, I should save. So one of the things I was thinking about doing was using Photoshop to set up my images first, but I, that, that kind of felt like cheating too. So I actually want to use SketchUp to scale and line up my drawings uh, right now. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my three images here and I'm going to make them into a group. No, I'm gonna take my three images, I'm gonna make them into a component. And we'll see why, that, that's an intentional move. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into my component and I'm gonna start by scaling the front, the head-on view. So I don't have exact dimensions. Uh, upstairs we have a hard hat, it's not, it's not a real big hard hat, it's actually a little bit slimmer than a normal hard hat, and I measured that, and at the temple, right about here, it's right about eight inches. So I figured that might be a good dimension. So what I wanna do is I wanna say from here, straight across to here, I want that to be eight inches. So I'm gonna start by scaling that. So that line, click here to here. I want that to be exactly eight inches. Enter, do I resize the whole thing? Yes. All right, so that scaled this image. One of the things you may have noticed is when I drew that line, it was not on axes. So if I come in here just to, to re-illustrate that, what I'm talking about, here's my red axes, and you see the difference between the blue line and the red line. I try to pick about the same spot. So if I want to get this back to straight, what I can do is I can grab just the image in the line and then I'll use rotate to grab that line and pull it on axes like that. So not perfect, but this way, um, if I pull the left side versus the right side, I'll hopefully get about the same image. All right, um, I'm gonna take those because I want that to stay in a group. I'm gonna make that a group right now just so I don't end up losing that line or bumping it or anything like that. Um, I'm gonna take this, this picture right now and I'm gonna bring it over here because what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that my two images are the same size. So obviously I got some Z fighting here right away. Z fighting is when I have two flat planes in the same spot and as I move around the drawing, it flickers because they fight Z fighting to see who will be on top in the Z axes. I'm gonna get rid of that by hitting uh, X-ray because I'm actually gonna use SketchUp right now to properly scale my drawings. So over here, I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna line it right up with the bottom of the chin. So there, my two lines are about the same there. And now I'm going to stick a line right here and I'm gonna draw another line right here. I'm gonna take these two. What do I wanna do here? I'm trying to think how to best scale this up now. So I wanna scale it to that. There we go. That's good enough for reference imagery. Um, actually, let's, let me keep that line there. 
I'm going to create start creating some some reference lines going at the bottom across here like this too. Out of curiosity, how tall does that make that helmet then? Around 11 inches tall, so just under a foot. I don't know how big that is. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of thinking the same thing. Somebody's, a couple people have mentioned eight inches seems small. Um, I, I agree, and I think I'm gonna change it. But I'm not gonna change it yet because I am going to come in here and get all of my images scaled first then making a change to the overall helmet size is going to be super simple because I can just change one dimension and the whole thing will scale. All right, so there we are. Right here, this is a little bit different because it shows the bottom here. So I'm going to draw another line here to here. Scale that down just a touch. So something like that is, is where I want my reference imagery. Um, I should be able to pull this across. That should go right across the brow there. It's just slightly off. I'm going to take this one and scale it up just a bit, just like 1.01. .01. That looks better. Okay. So that looks all right. Um, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got your uh, asterisk replaced eight replaced by asterisk. Um, I'm wondering how big that should go to get padding in there. Because like I said, one, 12 inches seems or 11 inches seems a little small here. Um, what do you guys think? So the outside of a helmet like that, human heads what six inches, seven inches? I don't know. Um, Yeah, it's the other things I do need to, well, that's not too far off of a vertical, I think. Um, so let's see what nine inches looks like. So again, I'm in the group right now. I should be in the group. So this is what I was saying. It's real easy to just come in here at any time and go make this nine inches. Whoops, I did that wrong. Ah. I was, I was drawing a reference on rather than scaling. Nine inches. If I bring that up to nine inches, ten and a half inches, that's just over a foot tall. So it's eight to nine inches long. I feel okay about that. I'm gonna go with that and we'll come back and take a look at it as the helmet starts to come together. And we can, like I said, it's super easy to change. So as long as I do all of my modeling inside this component, I can take the whole thing, the whole component, and resize the entire thing just off of this line at any point. So as long as I remember, which I won't remember, I promise you guys, I will forget at some point and start modeling something out of context. But as long as I do all my modeling inside this component, then I should be able to resize everything at any time. Speaking of which, like I said, I really want to make this high resolution. I want to make this uh, very much, as much as I can, um, smooth. So I know 3D printing is still have 3D print lines to smooth out, but I would like to not have facets in the helmet. I don't want this to look low poly. So I do want to model it um, fairly big. Yeah. Richard over on Facebook says that a large head is seven inches wide. So I left at the at the smaller point. I left. Uh, hey Marconi, that means an inch on either side for material. So I do want to print this. I don't want to print it thick. I want it to be light. So maybe an eighth inch thick, a little over an eighth inch, um, and then have some room for padding. So we'll see. We'll see how nine nine works. So one thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this. 
then make a copy of it. I'm gonna set this copy over here to the side of, hey, we should check. Hey, Mark, hold still for a sec. I'm gonna explode Mark. Uh, I'm exploding him because I want him to stay flat. I don't want him to spin around. And then we'll put him on axes. We'll take this. Oops. So let's see if Mark is truly drawn to scale. That works. Mark's head fits in there. I guess it's better to have it a little bit too big and add extra foam for padding than have it be way too small and, you know, have to remove your ears or something like that. Agreed. Make it work. <laughs> All right, we'll throw this back on the ground. Um, and I'm gonna take this one and I'm just gonna scale it up by 100. So we'll model in this one but uh, we'll maintain scale with this copy down here. Um, that's right, Mark's the Mandalorian. I should also point out, I don't know if anybody ha here has picked this out, but I do have a new mouse today. Um, you guys know I'm a diehard, dedicated Logitech master, and I actually have my, my old mouse is still here for moral support, right here. But <laughs> after I bought this when I first started SketchUp, so over four years ago, and I started to have some lag in the buttons. Like I push a button and it doesn't always respond. I have to tap it once or twice. The thumb button makes a squeak noise whenever I push it. So I got a new one, but the new one is also an MX Master. This is the MX Master 3. So it's in, I got it in Mandalorian Silver. So this is the Beskar version. Um, no, I'm just kidding. It's just silver. It's gray or whatever. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to see how this works. It is a little bit smaller than the old MX Master. This one's a little bit bigger. So this one, my, my pinky kind of feels all on its own over here. But uh, I mean, overall, a lot of it works very similar. The thumb layout's a little bit different. On the old MX Master, the front back button and the scroll wheel were all in line. On this one, they're actually separated. The front back's down here. And so... We'll see, I'll let you guys know what I think of it. This is my first uh, at length modeling I've done with this. I just got it this week and really haven't been in SketchUp very much. So uh, I'll let you know what I think of it as, as we move along. Okay, um, so looking at this helmet, the one thing that I, I have noticed that I'm wondering about is because of the way it's shaped, there's not a straight, somebody pointed out, it doesn't sit flat on the table because it curves down at the bottom. So what I'm kind of wondering about is, is this actually to scale? Because if I tip it, I need to make it a bigger, or smaller scale. The one thing that I can see that's almost, so this, this ridge right here on the brow is on axes here, close to. So if I do come here to the top here, and ah, man, I don't know, because it starts to starts to angle down because of the curvature of the thing. So I kind of feel like it needs to be rotated just a little bit to be square, but I'm going to leave it. We'll, we'll just see what happens. Um, all right, I'm going to, I need two dimensions. So my, here's my thought on this. Uh, one of the things I did with the Iron Man helmet was I modeled it in a lot of fairly small pieces. I, I would draw some wire work and then uh, I would use Fredo extension to go in and skin that space or that, that, that wire outline. And that worked fairly well, but I did end up with disconnected pieces that I had to go in and kind of join up. So I'm trying to think if there's ways that I can kind of cut down the number of pieces. So I think what I want to try to do is grab a half sphere, fairly high poly half sphere, put that right here, and then just use scale 
the whole thing, not as a half, not a left and a right half, do the whole thing as one, the whole dome is one piece. And then I'm thinking I can use push pull to pull it down and then have this from here back, have that be just one piece that kind of comes down and then maybe use scale here and then cut it at the angle, go in and make the cut for this and then do some sort of a follow me to put the mohawk -y shape there. So I think I can get all of this saved for this panel right here, the ears and the mask. I think I could get all of that as one solid piece to start with. Ambitious? Yes. But I think it's going to be easier to do that than to try to model this as a bunch of pieces and hook them all together. The other thing I have to keep in mind, um, like I said, the goal of this is to print it. So one of the things I want to make sure I do is keep all of my pieces that I create printable. So I'm going to come into my scale drawing down here and I'm going to draw a little box. That box is going to be 280 millimeters by 280 millimeters. That was a rectangle, not a line. <laughs> 280 comma 280. And then that is 250 tall. This is the size of our Lulzbot Taz print bed. Um, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to, I'm just going to fill that with some translucent materials. I think we got our first question of the day from Facebook a couple minutes ago, but I didn't want to interrupt. Oh. Um, we've got a question about the controller you're using for your camera. It's only a matter of time. So it this right inevitable. here, <laughs> and it'll happen again. This right here is a 3D mouse, specifically the Space Mouse Enterprise from 3D Connection. Casey will grab a link and throw it into the chat too. Uh, this is how I animate in 3D. It's how I orbit, move around, zoom. Um, not a requirement for SketchUp by any means. Most people use SketchUp without that. Uh, I do like it for SketchUp because I show SketchUp a lot like this. And what this lets me do is have these nice, smooth animations as opposed to, you know, the middle mouse and zooming and orbiting, which we all do and we're all fine with. Uh, this just doesn't translate quite as well to a recording as something like this. All right. I'm um, going to go ahead and post that link in chat. So if anyone wants to take a look at their page, you can go for it. But as always, it's not a requirement for SketchUp. Right. Um, something weird happened. For some reason, this right here, 9, 13, 16, so if I look at my copy up here, It's not, it's, for, it's, it's, oh, I didn't scale, I scaled wrong. Okay, hold up. Uh, I scaled this when it was a 2D drawing. So I deformed my copy of this only on the X and the Y. So now that I'm coming in adding Z dimensions, it's not scaling the Z properly because the Z scale is, is one to one. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of my big copy take this copy with my uh, printer outline, make a copy of that again, and scale that up by 100. Got confused there for a minute. I'm back. I understand what's going on now. I know where I am. I know what I'm doing. Okay. Whew. Hey, let's save. How about that? Who's up for that? Who's up for some saving? <laughs> it's a very good idea. And there we go. All right, less talky, more drawy. All right, so I'm going to get a line here. So what I want now is I'm going to take this line, copy it up here, and I'm going to put a circle on there. 
Well, again, like I was saying, I'm going to go fairly high polygon for this because um, it's going to be pretty big. And it's going to be the whole dome. I mean, this, there's not a whole lot of places to hide what's going on here. I don't know if this is going to work, but uh, I'm going to make something like a 96-sided circle. Put it right here. Here, I'll grab this. You'll follow me, and there's there's my dome. I'm a templar templarily. That's helmet humor. Temple, you know. Anyhow, moving <laughs> on. I'm gonna make that into a group templarily, um, and I'm gonna grab it by the endpoint and bring it right here. Take a look at what that looks like. How are you doing a lot of this in x-ray mode? All right, so I can see if that's lined up with the front and the back. You can see, obviously, it's not a perfect half circle. So I'll start by scaling it this direction. Down. I'm going to come inside that mohawk shape, too. Um, Yeah, it's really not. The front definitely tilts back this way more. Let's see. I'm not giving up on this yet, but I don't have a good <laughs> feeling about this right now. And take that from the middle, put it in the middle of this, this line right here. Scale, and I'm going to scale about the middle and pull that in. To my edge. Hmm. Well, I want to scale it back a little bit more like that. It doesn't quite match that curve though. Well, I thought I thought I had an easy fix, but I think I'm gonna to have to actually model that with a little more accuracy than I could get away with there. Oh well. Easy come, easy go. All right. So what I'm going to do instead, because this isn't, yeah, you can see it. If you look at it, there's definitely more. The front goes back this way. I guess for you guys, it's like, it's this, this way. Yeah. See that arc of the, the front is far more. This is almost vertical by the time it comes back here. But here, it definitely swoops straight back, or swoops back. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, draw some curves. So I'll come, say, from here to here. Here and then something like that. Here to here. Go back. I'm I'm trying to stay inside that Mohawky line too. So that's a closer. I'm gonna take these lines too. I didn't. Let's try again. Uh, oops. What's going on? Apparently, I can't talk and draw Bezier curves. I don't know if you guys picked up on that. <laughs> Things just got real quiet in here. In all fairness, it is rather difficult to think and do things at the, like that at the same time. I, I'm having trouble with words today as well. That's good. That's good. That's It's good that we're <laughs> doing this together then. Solidarity. Yes, indeed. <laughs> all right. So that's going to be my dome. 
Uh, over here, I only want to draw half of it, so I'm going to take this line straight up. I'm going to draw my bezier on this side. I'm going to come down just a little bit because, again, this the curve's going to come something more like here. Oh, actually, what I should do is this line in. in no, never mind. I shouldn't do anything. All right, so I'm going to draw something like that. Ah, I'm just drawing line today. All right, that's okay. So, why didn't that close? What did I do wrong? All right, so I'm gonna take these two over here, rotate, whoops, rotate that up 90 degrees. Now the question is, where does this go? Because if I come across like that, so I think this should probably be scaled up to the tallest point on here. I don't know, I'm making lots of things up today here, guys. Up. I, need, I need an intersection line, so I'll do that. And I'll scale that up so I can snap up to that line. All right, so now this should be 36 feet. I forgot about scale. I want to double check and see. Wait a minute, what's going on? Where's my. Ah, told you! I told you I'd do it. <laughs> All right, gonna cut that, go in context and edit, paste in place. All right, because I want to double check to make sure. Oh man, it's so quick. I thought I'd have a little more time. All right, so that's right close to four and a half inches. So we're still close to our nine inches for the whole whole thing. Um, So the other thing I want to do is I'm going to have to get some more Bezier curve, curviness right here to here to get that. And I'm, I'm going out to the red and then I'm, I'm finishing on the vertical. Whoa, or so I thought. Red, green, Pfft. it was a colored axis. All right, so this is, this is actually fairly important. <laughs> Be on the red this way, and the blue, not the green, this way. Oh my gosh, I just did it wrong again. The green, not the red, oh boy. Thank you very much, good night. <laughs> All right, we're gonna come red this way and then we're gonna go on the blue axes. Blue axes. There we go. Whew. No, that looks too blocky. I don't like that. One more time. Six tries a charm. Come out the red axes this way. And then pull that on the blue axes. All right. Whew. I think we're getting there. That's it's something. That, that's that's what I will say about that. All right. So now I'm gonna try to grab the. Uh, oh man, come. In context. Well, at least you can do paste in place. I know. Really making an argument for the the power of paste in place today. All right. So I'm gonna take mm -hmm. these three sides, go to uh, tool palettes, and I'm gonna turn on curve aloft because we're gonna be using it a lot. And I'm going to skin that. All right, that looks good for right now. Do the same thing here. Grab one, two, three. Whoops, that break. Curve aloft it. All right. And I'm going to grab both of these. I'm going to use 
Keurig mirror to make a copy down below. Grab all that, make it a group. Before I, I, I do have, op why is that? Oh no, because I didn't copy this. All right, so we'll take this. Well, here, we'll do this first. We'll grab this, stick it right here. Okie doke, like that. And grab that. Move it vertical. Drop that right here. Give me my give me my snap point. All right, turn X ray. That will get my snap point easier. All right. I accept this. This is going to be acceptable. This is going to work for what I want to do, I think. Looks like it's a little bit tall, so maybe I'll just scale that down ever so slightly so I get it. Like that. Cool. All right. I do want to make this right off the bat into a solid. Um, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab all of this and explode it because when you use uh, Curveloft to make uh, a mesh, it puts that mesh into its own group immediately. So you do have to bring it out if you want it to meld with other pieces. All right, so if I get go into this and get rid of these lines, I like it. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna, well here, let's, hey, that's a good sign. If you hit orient faces and it does what you're expecting, that's awesome. I'm gonna, smooth this part out. I'm not selecting all and just hitting uh, soft and smooth and that is on purpose. I don't want to lose this line down the middle. Uh, we do have to add that that little ridge down the middle that runs down there uh, and I think the easy thing is going to do is going to be to use uh, follow me but I can't follow me if I don't keep that line so all right. Oh, let's let's solid it up. It didn't work. All right, let's do this vertically. Hmm. Something's not perfect. I don't like that. All right, so I'm guessing we're slightly out of plane here. So what I'm going to do is turn this to 90 degrees. I'm going to draw a plane on the ground like that. And I'm going to push that, put that on the plane. So you can see, see that little bit of white that's coming out. It was just, just, so one of my curves was just slightly out of plane. I don't know if Fredo scale, when it made the mesh, if it pulled that up, or if when I drew the curve, I was just off. Um, really, it doesn't, doesn't matter, but that's what's happening. So I think what I can do, I'm, gonna, I'm trying some new stuff here, guys. I'm gonna try to grab a DBO push line and just pull that line straight down. Hey, I think. It's not, it's not pretty. It's not terrible, but it's not pretty. Actually, this is the direction I want to go anyhow, so uh, it's not a ridiculous step. So that's an extension. A DBO push line allows you to take lines and deal with them the way you would do push-pull on a regular surface really handy for things like that. Because now what I should be able to do, I think, oops. So this line is still off axes. So let's take this and put it somewhere. I don't really care where it intersects. But what I wanna do is I wanna grab this surface right here, say intersect face with model, 
that's gonna break it horizontally. And now, if I get rid of this chunk down here, I should be able to just draw a line across here and have it close up. Oh, beautiful. All right. I'm gonna make this into a component. Uh, and I'm gonna call this the dome. I don't know my helmet terminology, I'll totally admit that. <laughs> All right, I wanna make it a component because here's what I wanna do. Um, can, you, can you look for uh, a DBO push line, A-D-E-B-E-O, Casey, and throw a link up to it? It's a great extension, it's really helpful. Um, I used to do all the time, if I had a single line I wanted to be push-pulled, you know, I'd go in and grab, draw a line down, over, back up, and hope everything was in plane. The nice thing about a DBO push line is you can grab lines that aren't in plane and just pull them in a direction. Very, very cool. Casey yeah. will find a link for that. And throw Got it a link there. for it. Um, right. Posting it now. All right. I'm going to, from this point right here, make a copy and stick that point right here. I'm going to rotate it this way. 90 degrees. Rotate it this way. 90 degrees. And what I'm thinking about is pulling this down pretty much all the way like that. Now, um, I'm going to take the bottom and use the bottom to scale because it does have a little bit of a tilt on the back there. Something kind of like that. Um, the front's going to be cut out, so I'm okay with that. It is pretty close to being vertical, but I think it kind of flares the other way too. So I will do this. I will take a copy of this exact same uh, this exact same solid. As long as I keep copying it, I'm just copying that same uh, same geometry over and over again. So from that point, vertical up to my drawing. And there I can see it does kind of flare out a little bit. So I can come in here, grab this, scale this time about the middle. And pull that out there. So it covers up. <laughs> I gotta get to it better. I can't, I'm covering up immediately my reference imagery, so I can't actually tell how wide to go. There we go. So just enough so it covers up that that chunk of, I don't know, whatever you call that, the cheek or the jowl, <laughs> the helmet jowl. All right, this feels like a good start. Let's print that, we'll go from there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, so now, what I need to do now is on this guy over here, I'm thinking I will do a couple things. One is I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna come this way and then come down. My thought is, so I do have to think about how I'm gonna break this up to print. Our print bed's not big enough to print this whole thing in one piece, That'd be real, that would be easy. Um, actually, but Casey was pointing out a good reason not to do that. This obviously is gonna be hours and hours and hours of printing. One of the downsides to printing a huge print is if you get to like, 95% and something goes wrong, you potentially lose like days of printing. So there's definitely a practical reason to printing in smaller pieces if need be. Of course, when you print in a smaller piece, that does have the disadvantage of having to assemble everything later and that leaves you with uh, gaps right. in the model we're, we're and then you have to do some work to get it to look right. Definitely pluses and minuses here. Um, so we have to break it up for our printer anyhow. This whole helmet will fit, but I think I measured and I think we can get this dome on here. We'll, we'll drop it in in just a second. And I'm kind of thinking like what I would call the cowl, the piece comes in the back, maybe I can make that one piece. 
and then maybe the front will be one or two pieces, but I'm thinking about where I want to split it. So the first one, the horizontal break is pretty obvious right here at the rim. So this, this dome will just be the geometry we have right here plus that mohawk chunk running down the middle. That'll be piece one. The cowl, I want to break, and I'm thinking the best way to do it is going to be to break it right here under the ear because I'm going to have a seam, but if I can have the front, the face, the mask, and the cowl come together underneath the seam, then I can actually break it right there and then model this ear as a separate piece that can just then lay on top. So that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> we'll see. Sometimes thoughts and reality, they don't always line up. They don't always agree with me, but I think that's going to work out okay. So what I want to do now is I want to take this bucket that we have now and I want to put two cuts on it. One cut is going to be this, it's not, it's not a straight cut either. It's kind of a little bit of a curve, got a little bit of a curve to it. So I'm going to make a solid here that I can take a snip out of this bucket with. And then the other piece I will cut right now is just at the ear, we'll just cut straight down and lose this front, front piece off. The front's going to have to be kind of sculpted anyhow, so uh, I'm not too worried about starting from scratch for the face. But I think that's gonna do, and that, that, if I do that correctly, that will finish, not finish, but will be pretty close to finish with the dome. We just have to have, add the mohawk and the cowl piece. The cowl piece we do have to go make a cut into to get this piece, which will, I'll probably print separately laying flat and then set it in. And then ears, so have the dome, the cowl, this back of cowl thing, two ears, and then one or two pieces for the face mask. So I don't know how I was counting right there. I was just making fingers move every time I said a word. <laughs> so let's try again. <laughs> the dome, the cowl, the cowl piece at the back, one, two ears, and then one or two pieces. Depending on the face mask, if, it, if, we can, if I can find a good way to print it as one piece, I'll do it as one, but uh, I'm kind of thinking it might end up being two pieces, but that will be six to seven pieces to print. That's not too bad, especially since some of those can be printed together. The ears in this piece could probably all be laid flat and printed at once. Okay, that was a lot of talking. Um, so first thing, or next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I am still working inside context. That's a plus. I'm going to temporarily hide this. And I've had a couple people call me out for hiding so much. They say that you really shouldn't hide. You should, uh, you know, put things on a layer and hide them. And I, I don't argue with that. That's, that's probably the best way to do it. The only time I ever actually hide things is like this, where I'm going to turn it off and then turn it back on before the next save. Because then I know I'm not going to lose stuff. I'm not going to have a bunch of junk floating out there in... Uh, Heidi land. That's the place I just made up. All right, I'm gonna come in here and draw a Bezier curve from here down to probably a little bit of fine tuning, but I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go past where I wanna actually cut, maybe right here. And I'm pull my first curves kind of mellow like that. And then my second curve gets a little bit more like that. And then going to is this line in the way you are in the way all right I'm just breaking these lines and getting them out of my way temporarily that way I can take this make that a solid make it a big solid um, because I'll use that to subtract that bottom chunk off the helmet. This piece right here is broken because I, have, I start horizontal. I actually want to keep that horizontal because I'd like a square cut for where I put this plate in. Um, so that was intentional. That break actually should be there. All right, so with that, I'm going to go edit, unhide, last. Now I have this, which is a solid component. I have this, which, whoops make that a group, is now a solid group. So something's about to happen. When I use solid tools, because I still haven't gone and got 
the Enerot extension. Um, when I break this, when I hit intersect, this is going to no longer be uh, a component. So it's going to lose its connection to this piece and this piece and become a whole new piece. <clears throat> as long as you know this, it's not too big of a deal, big, big of a piece to have to deal with. So I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, no, actually, I'll leave those two where they are. And I'll take this. And I'll turn on solid tools. And Dave, I think Dave is the one who told me this, the way to remember this. I never know which one to choose first, which piece. And it's always do this to this. So subtract, we're going to subtract. So I want to cut this from this. So I'm going to select my cutter first. Then I'm going to choose subtract as opposed to trim. I don't really care about keeping my cutter, so I'm just going to use subtract rather than trim from this. And there we go. All right. Beautifully done. Helmets coming together. Um, like I said, these two pieces now are different. See, they don't have the cut, but I'm not, I'm not panicking yet. I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm not too worried yet, and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a minute. I have a little more work I want to do on this because I do want to break it at the ear to pull the face mask off. So I'm going to do that first, and then I'll come back and tell you how we're going to fix our disconnect. All right, so looking where the ear is, I'm going to pick this point right here. Go straight down. I'm gonna go straight down like this. Whoops, I didn't, oh, stupid x-ray. <laughs> I wanna come down to that point. I'm out of context again. Command X, double click, edit, paste in place. There we go. I'm gonna drag that vertical all the way through the model. And on the other side, I'm gonna bring that point Back up. Is that point in line just to verify? Yep. All right. That's good. Actually, I do want to do that. I want to draw that line across there. Whew. All right. So now I'm going to turn it off a couple things. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And I can, I should be able to delete this piece, this piece, this piece why I did not get, why do you think that didn't close up? Let's see, let's do some testing real quick. I'm guessing using error, user error, how about you guys? Yep, that was me, that was all me. I did that. <laughs> uh, and what about here, why aren't you closing? Made sure you were in line. I made sure you were straight. Hmm. Curious. Yeah, sometimes when you start getting into weird curvy stuff like this, SketchUp needs to be reminded that things are in plane. I don't understand. I don't know what's going on. I can't say that I uh, I got this sorted just yet. Huh. Can I erase that? No. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of these lines. I'm going to clean all of this up. Whoops. Oh, too much. Don't. Oh, stop. <laughs> I just did something wrong, and then I did it, and I did it again. <laughs> own worst enemy sometimes. That and, as was pointed out, math. Those are my two enemies. Well, what's going on here? Uncool. I must have deleted something again. Uh, huh. There we go. That was weird. I'm fairly sure, certain that was a that was probably still on me. We're getting there. That's right. All right, so we got a start of a thing. Not, still not quite sure. I'm gonna test test a thing or two here. I can go 
anybody going to close up if I do this? Like my arc wasn't quite. This is really weird. Hmm. Oh, well. I will get it. I get to do a little hand stitching. It's therapeutic. It's like knitting. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm wondering if I erase. No, so there's a little bit of an arc going on here. Yeah, something. Oh. Uh oh. Oh. What did I do? What have I done? <laughs> My gosh. Okay. I'm not sure what's, I could probably just loft this all together is probably the smarter, more time efficient way to do this. I'll just do that real quick, hold up. All right, let's grab that. Loft that. No, oh, I missed a piece. No, I didn't. Turn that line off, there we go. Please? Yeah, something weird's happening. Okay, well, let's see. Let's, what if we just do this? What if, what if I was to just grab that? Oh, there we go. That's my problem. Now, let's skin it. No, I've made something, I've made more problems. All right, I'm done with this. I'm gonna go in and draw my vertical rectangle like that. Yeah, so this somehow came just off axes. I'm just going to uh, push line this thing again. I'm not really sure what happened there, but I'll just take all of that. Uh, we've got someone in chat recommending turning on hidden geometry to see if we can see anything that's causing it. Yeah, I got a pretty, I got a pretty sweet mesh right here. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Actually, it's coming. It is just coming off. Oh, you know what? I, oh, undo, undo, undo. I got an idea. I have an idea. I'm going to come over here to the midpoint. And I'm going to grab this point and bring it down on surface. Sure, what happened there either? All right, turn off hidden. Grab this. Ah, you know what I need to do is I need to just weld this because this is this is killing me. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Just get my arc turned on. Weld that. Off my two pieces. Now, come in here, try to rotate that onto there. There we go. I'm not sure, again, I don't know if, I don't know if Dave or any of you guys have ever hit an issue like that where not 100% sure what happens when you use uh, that tool, uh, um, uh, curve aloft. It seemed like something was just slightly off. But anyhow, okay, so we're there. Uh, I'm gonna push this up 
Actually, that's not gonna work either. I can't push it straight up because it's, it's on a curve, but I do need to take this chunk out. So I'm gonna draw, turn on my hidden. Connect that to that. Just right about there. Out, go back. Here we go. Same thing on this end. We'll go to grab this, go to this, mirror that here. It's going to give me cut planes so I can cut that on surface. Yeah. All right, so I'll hide the rest. I need to make this into a solid so I can cut it out. I'm making a lot of stuff up right now. Let's go down to that point, back to that point. Carry that through to the bottom. Pull that into the surface. Pull this into, whoops, a little, little notch there. So I'm basically just making a block so I can That was a whole bunch of geometry. I think there's a problem with the top one as well. With this up here? Yeah, if you zoom in on the top. Up here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm just going on. just off the edge, which I think is okay, because I'm bringing, this is, this is what I want to cut out. Okay, um, cool. So I think we're okay. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm just gonna grab all of that. Grab all that, intersect face with selection. All right, and then the erasing can begin. that back out of the way, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. And we got a little box set in there. Something like this I think is going to work. I, I have a feeling this, this design is going to change as we move forward, but right now that puts a little square box in back. So I think that's kind of where I want to get to with these two pieces. Um, yeah, Christopher Morin saying what the easier way to do would have been to draw that box and extend it just all the way through, and that would have been good. Um, I got excited. I started doing stuff. You know, thinking and doing aren't always the same thing. <laughs> all right, so this now is still a group. I'm gonna take this now and make it a component. I'm gonna call this my, no, I'm gonna call it, like, since I might be doing this more than once, I'm gonna call it Dome, Dome 2.0. And I'm gonna create that. Now, if I come over here to components, and look at my in-house components, I got my dome right here, and I got Dome 2.0. So what I can do is I can actually select these two standard domes, right click over here and say replace selected and those will update. So since you can't use solid tools to manipulate components, sometimes you gotta take that extra step to put that geometry back in afterwards. So fortunately, it's not a big deal. It's not, it's not too painful or anything like that. 
All right, this is looking good. Uh, just because it's bugging me, I wanna put on real quick the, uh, there's kind of a rim here and then our mohawk that goes up the top. Um, trying to think the best way to tackle that. So I'm gonna hide this, here's the look. This rim is really just like kind of a squashed circle. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna come over here. I'm going to, at this point, I'm just gonna draw out So I just, I just want a, a work plane right there. Because I think if I come in here, just as a real super quick mock-up, that's about the size of the rectangle that I want to put on there. I'm going to come over here. Rotate that vertical. All right, so that's what I want. You could probably ask, why didn't I just do that to begin with? And the answer is because I didn't think of it until I started doing it. I probably should have got that rectangle first. Because now I can just take that, put that right here. That's what I want to do. So, But I do want to put an arc on it. All right, I'm gonna go into the helmet now with so I'm I'm doing some no look modeling right now, uh, but that is the shape I want. I want to take that all the way around this rim. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna triple click and make that a group. I'm gonna cut it. I'm going to go in context into my component helmet, helmet component, and I'm going to paste in place. I'm going to grab this line and this line, and I'm going to say follow me, right click, edit group, and click right here. And that's going to pull that all the way around. Now I want to look at it, and this was, this was why I did this. I did it separate because I was wondering about this right here. Uh, because of the angle of this, my piece right here actually comes away from the helmet a little too much. So I'm going to undo a couple times. Right, and I'm going to grab this line and I'm just going to pull it in like way more than I actually need. It's better to have too much than not enough. All right, now I'm going to grab that line and that line. I'm going to say follow me again, right click, edit group, click on it now. There's a little more meat right there. That's, that's better. There we go. So now I got a good rim all the way around. Okay. Now, here's the real test. Can we get all that joined together? Um, and I want to look at, yeah, so this is going to disappear under the ear. It, it ties into it there. Um, Cool, so that is really, that's what I need. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna grab all this, explode, and I'm gonna grab everything, right click, intersect face with selection. I don't know if that's gonna work, let's see what happens. Um, that left a gap, look at that. Oh, little tiny, can I push pull this up? I can, Ooh, look at that. That was nice. It was way easier to fix than I was expecting. If I peek inside now, see if I can see how easy this cleanup ends up actually being. Delete, delete. Little tiny lip right here. 
something's still out of square right here, but uh, I'm okay fixing that afterwards. Um, it's really easy. I want to I'm not trying to cut corners, but I'm going to be honest about some things. The geometry we're currently looking at, that we're, that we're having to heal, is very small, right? We're looking at fractions of fractions of inches, fractions of millimeters. Um, so sometimes when I get to this point, I just, general by nature, I try to make things perfect. And I have to kind of sometimes remind myself that I don't have to make this perfect because it's I'm, I'm drawing something that's smaller than my filament that I'm actually printing with. Uh, so I don't know if you're like that too, but sometimes I have to let things be imperfect so that they ever get done. <laughs> um, this, for example, somewhere in here I have something's a little bit off. I don't know what it is, where it is, um, but something's not, see, something's really wrong here because I just did this selection and I got 14, 12 entities. That ain't right. If I look at just this line, this one, this should be a line. There's nine lines there. Something wacky is going on, but you know what? I don't really want to chase that right now. What I want to do, whoops. Sorry, I just saw that there's a problem up here and then I used delete and made it bigger. Um, so I don't want to mess with that. So I'm just going to get rid of this rim and then just close up the whole thing again. All right, there we go. Take that around. Now the question is, what's the easiest way to close this up? Draw a single line, apparently. All right, I'm going to run Solid Inspector real quick. All right. And at that point, we got two solid or a big solid piece. Very cool. So we have the cutout here. Uh, the other piece we need is... I'm going to model the ears real quick because I want to put an indent in here that the ears will go into, cut that out, and then uh, I'll proceed to hollowing these out and making those pieces and setting them apart. We're doing good, I have to tell myself. I do want to get this modeled like today, so um, I'm going to hide this piece so I can model right here. All right. I'm holding on to these lines. I'm not sure why. I should probably just group them, but uh, I haven't. So I'm going to draw a rough shape first. I'm assuming these pieces are parallel. Yep. So it looks like it comes up this right here is one piece. Then it looks like it goes a little bit wider. I'm drawing black on black. So I'm going to go in here to styles. No, I'm, I'm just going to, this is only going to take a second, so I'm not going to mess with my style. I'm just going to turn on x-ray. Um, so there is some, I got a foreshortening thing going on here because I have depth here and you can see it's not quite looking straight on. It's kind of at an angle because I can see the top of the ear here, but not here. So, uh, I'm going to model half of this as though I was looking straight down on it. So it's going to come out at a little bit of an angle like this. It's going to come over like that. It's going to go up. Parallel to that, and come back over, and then I'm going to have an arc. And I 
not quite coming over far enough to eat. Once you come over this far, wait, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Let me argue with myself for a second. Oh, that's why, because I'm off, I'm just slightly off axes right now. There we go. Okay, so there's my outline of the entire earpiece. Oh man, this is gonna this is gonna kill me because I'm everything's off axes right now. Bring all this over here and let's get it all straightened out. Go make that piece. This piece want to make like that. This piece want to make like this. Psh, thinking before you act. Psh, what's that about? All right. Take this now. Flip it over. That was good. Cool. All right, so there's an outline. I'm just gonna model the rest of it just from looking at this instead of, I'm not gonna really try to trace it because like I said, it's so far off. So the first thing that looks like it happens is it does have a little bit of depth this way. And then I'm gonna save. Who, who, who Always did I, a good call. Did I catch anybody out on that? Oh, no, nobody, nobody cares anymore. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to make this into a group. Go right here, right near this, so I can say, okay. Um, looks like what I got is like that, but it looks like it comes down just a little bit. down on the green axes and then I got a little bit of a, a thing like this something like that I think and then this part goes up to here got to turn off x-ray because I'm snapping the back of my piece there comes across to here down to here 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 and here And then that comes up taller. And then this piece right here, actually looks like a little bit of a ridge. It's kind of softened, like it's, it's worn down or something. But I have something like, it looks like that. And then this goes to here, this goes to here. Take out of that, that. I'm going to take this piece and this is going to get a little weird because uh, I'm do this. So pull that up. That's not folding the way I want to fold though because of these pieces right here. I'm going to draw a line back here. Now move that vertically. That's better. There we go. So I'm not too worried about wrecking this geometry right here because I'm really just going to project this straight back. This is going to come back like this. I could actually do this with push pull too. That would actually be the not dumb way to do this <laughs> is 
Uh, yeah, come here, come here, buddy. Let's slide out of there. Got some, got some planes in my face. All right, if I just come in here, draw a line across, and I can just push pull this up to the edge there. And then I could push pull and intersect, but really, it's just this line is the only thing that I'm creating there. So that's that's pretty simple. Uh, this, so in order to make this plane happen, there is a slight break here. I'm fine with that. It's not going to be perfect. That's, I'm okay, <coughs> because that does actually, the way those planes meet, that's all good. I'm good with that. Um, now, slap this back up here and make this thing. So it kind of looks like <laughs> what I... What I think I'm seeing is it looks like right down here we have a piece that goes up. Whoops, did it again. I'm a big fan of pace and place because I forget to model in context all the time. I'm just going to draw a new arc across here. All right, and then it looks like a little bit of a gap there, so something like that maybe. So I'm assuming that comes up to the same height here. And then this piece here comes down to here. This piece comes down to here. That looks like it comes up not quite as high. And then I'm going to temporarily draw, not temporarily, actually permanently draw a line like that because this line and this line move vertically down. And I actually do have, it's, hard, it's really hard to tell what happens here. I'm going to say it's something like this. And then this, follow me with this. Yeah, again, this is a spot where my in, inside my brain starts to scream, oh, that's not perfect. But then I also remember it's going to be about this big on the helmet, and uh, suddenly I worry less. <laughs> <laughs> worry, care, whatever. No, I'm, I'm, of course I care. I always care. I really do. I'm a careful guy. Um, but yeah, sometimes you can... Just beat your brain up trying to get stuff perfect that really, once I get small, same with erasing lines like this. I know that in the final product that's not going to matter at all, but uh, I just do it anyhow, but just out of, out of habit. All right, I'm going to take this whole thing, offset it in. So I can tell my scale's not quite perfect. Something's, I'm just a little bit off with some of my, some of my lines, but uh, I'm going to, I'm going to let that go. Why did that not? Huh, that's odd. That's very odd. So we have a little bit of that. must be askew somewhere. I guess so. I don't know how I'm... moving. There we go. Mm, very so strange. That one, and I'm going to flip it over. Ooh. Whoa. 
foot. Oh, because that's not the same height. Oh. All right, there we go. I'm going kind of quick now because I don't have to do. All right, so I assume that, oops, what's this? No, oh, I didn't erase my line. No problem. All right. That's a little too deep. I don't like it that deep. All right. All right, so there is my earpiece. That is, oh, you know what? There's these cool little vents that I really feel like I'd need to have. <laughs> uh, no, you know what? Those are just going to create undercuts on the print. I'm not going to mess with them. All right, so this is my earpiece. Um, and I'm going to make it a component. I'm going to call it my ear. I'm going to edit unhide all did I unhide or yeah oh I exited context before I hit unhide when you hit unhide you're telling it to unhide everything that is in context so I wasn't or that that wasn't that was that was on me yeah, but before we go any further, we should probably save. At least that's what chat seems to think. Oh, uh, uh, guys. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're right. Save. Okay. That was good thinking. Thank you for saving me for myself. All right. So we already determined this wasn't quite, uh, it wasn't straight up and down. It was a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to or a little bit, a little bit turned slightly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that same turn back in here, line it up with the drawing. All right, and then I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna put it right here. Um, looks like it's probably also got to tilt back because we did put a little bit of a, our helmet came out a little bit According to the drawing. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Come up here, pull this down to the face of the drawing. Cool. All right. This is we model this as a flat piece, but it's sitting into a curved piece. So I'm gonna come in here and give it just a little bit more depth. So I gave it, what did I say? So it's well, it's an inch and a quarter at 100 percent scale. So According to some quick math in my head, I can tell you that the actual measurement of that to scale would be, you know, about an eighth inch. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this and I'm going to pull it down just a little bit more so it can actually put a little bit of a notch into this, this piece right here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to offset it down. what looks like a f the full amount. So I actually want it to cut all the way in there. Give me a good chunk out of there to work with. Whoops, I didn't, apparently I had some breaks in the geometry back here. All right, there we go. Clean up, clean up. Awesome. We gotta get moving, we gotta get to that iconic mask as soon as possible. All right, so that looks good. I want to mirror that. This helmet is right flat on the picture, so I should be able to grab this, use Curic Mirror to option click right here, and that should flip it around perfectly to the other side. Beauty. Um, all right, so I wanna look at something real quick. I am a little bit concerned with how small my, even at scale, no, that's three inches. I'm good. I'm going to take this solid. Is it a solid? It's not a solid. So I'm going to grab, come in here, and I'm going to do solid inspector. I got some internal faces. There we go. Now it's solid. Nope, still not solid. That's your problem. Looks like everything is working, but it's not coming up to solid. Sometimes this happens. I've seen this where solid inspector will say it's solid, but then for whatever reason, SketchUp doesn't agree. 
nine times out of 10, here's how I fix that. <laughs> I take this, explode it, make a new component, Let's see, now, still, still no love. Hmm, well the next step I wanna do is solid, or is solid tools, so I need to figure this one out. Um, let's see, I have, I'm gonna save, because I have another, uh, where is it? Tools, I have something else here, solid solver. Let's run solid solver on it. There's five coplanar edges. Let's see what happens if I just let solid, what happens now? Still not solid. I think I stopped solid solver. Yes, yes, am I in a loop? I think so. Might be because some internal partitions remain or perhaps two or more. All right, so here's something else I wanna to try to do. Let's look at hidden geometry. Well, this is pretty well modeled, just gotta say, whoever made this. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run over here, run cleanup, merge spaces, erase stray geometry. Still no love. Um, yeah, I'm actually trying to tell it to take this and intersect it with this. Right now it's not. Right now it should be its own piece and it should be solid. I'm not sure why I don't have, oh, I do know why. What'd you find? All right, so here's the problem. This is, this is a great example, I'm actually, I say I'm glad this happens because I feel kind of dumb, but <laughs> I'm glad it happened. See this line right here? This line is created by two solid pieces coming together, meeting oh, at the edge. Yeah, I see, so what, I see where this is going. This becomes an inside and an outside, basically. Uh, and SketchUp won't recognize that or isn't okay with that. So again, we have to think about so when I, when I print this real size, it's gonna be about you know that big. So this little piece, it's just not a thing. It's not a thing I have to worry about. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll come over, I wanna make the same on both sides. So I'm gonna come over one inch at scale. I draw a line vertically and I'll pull that up like that. So what that does is that gets rid of that uh, piece being two faces. Like I said, it's so small, I'm never even going to uh, see it anywhere. Having said that, I'll be sure to point it out once it prints. <laughs> All right, there we go. This is one of those spots where computers are a little bit too exact sometimes. All right, so if I come out now, solid component. Hooray. Which, that's, that's solid. All right, let's save. All right, now I'm gonna take this and I wanna cut out the piece behind it, and I'm not gonna do that with trim, but or not with subtract, but trim. Oh, but now it's telling me my helmet's not solid. Seriously? What's your problem? All right, uh, let's run, let's try. I'll run all the tools, solid solver again. Gotta exit, I guess like the solid solver. SketchUp went away. <laughs> Where did it go? I don't know. It does happen. Mostly to me whilst making helmets. All right, <laughs> let's try that again. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. I think there's something weird going on with this rim up here still, because look at this. See that black line, how it gets darker and lighter? I think there's still something weird going on up here. Um, but let's see. I'm just gonna select it and run Solid Solver again from scratch and see if it, if it, ex bleh. yeah, that's a bad thing. 
I'm not going to do that again. I feel like I have sufficiently tested what's going on there. All right, so there's a thing happening. Yeah, I, I caught that. Um, so what I'm thinking is actually there's two things I want to do right now. Uh, I want to actually take my bucket here and I want to make it I want to make it a shell right now before I go any further anyhow. So I'm going to come delete some pieces. No, actually, no, yes, I do want to do that now. I'm going to delete some pieces. Because I want to take just this shell portion like that. I probably actually should have done it before I put this rim on, but we're past dealing with that right now. See, there's definitely something weird going on here because that says that's three edges. Oh, yeah, look at that little lip. That better? That's the other thing. It's, it's even at scale. It's so small. It's hard to see. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna take all of this. I'm gonna grab all of it. I'm gonna try to thicken it with a joint push pull. In case you'll throw up a link for that. Joint push pull is awesome because what it will let you do is push pull takes one surface and pushes it normal to its own face outward. Joint push pull lets you take any amount of geometry and push pull it. This is what I was a little concerned about this. This is what I was saying. I probably should have put that lip on afterwards because it's going to cause issues with this. All right. So. Well, I'm just going to take it off. I'm going to get rid of this. Use cleanup to get rid of my extra straight edges. Uh, slight technical problem with the extension warehouse right now. It's not loading joint push pull, so we will get that link out there as soon as we can. But Oops. right now you're just going to have to sit tight. Right. Sounds fair. All right, so I'll have to come back and I'll, I'll put that on afterwards. But right now, I should be able to take that. This this section at the back might cause issues too, but let's find out. Let's let's just thicken this thing. Um, what was it? Was it 1.25 feet? Is that what gave me an eighth of an inch? All right, let's see, at scale, how to do. The problem, so the problem I generally run into here is I end up with these weird gaps at corners and stuff like that. Sometimes this is my own doing, sometimes it's because of scale. So I'm gonna undo, this corner's doing weird things. So I wanna come in here and look. I don't, oh, I do have a little teeny tiny edge right there. I'm gonna try scaling it up again. Take this copy, scale this copy another 100 times. And now take that and see if joint push pull behaves better. Of course, now I don't know how far to offset because I don't know. Ooh, that's worse. Undo, undo. <laughs> Run away. All right, that didn't work out so well. Um, all right, so not a big deal. I'm still, like I said, I'm still trying to figure out how, how exactly to make all these things. I think what I'll do, I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna actually break this into two pieces. I wanna come in here, I wanna grab this piece right here, X, oops. I don't 
not finding the uh, joint push pull on the extension warehouse for some reason. You may have to get that. That may be on Sketchucation. Yeah, but at least the warehouse is loading now, so progress is being made. There we go. Take what you can get, cowl. And then up here, we'll take our dome separately. Let's see if this makes a difference. I, I don't know if this is going to do it or not, but um, I also want to grab that's vertex. I think that's thickener. All right, so I'm also going to erase this chunk, this line. I'm going to go ahead and post line. the sketchication link. Perfect. Yeah, Fredo's, Fredo has, I think, just about everything he has on sketchication. I don't know that he has everything mm -hmm. on 3D warehouse or extension warehouse. Yeah. Let's try that. All right, that worked out okay. I'd call that good, not great. Got some weirdness happening right here. Easy enough to fix. Once you start to get real dense geometry, uh, you can get some weird things happening. But, uh, I think this may be because of my my earlier goal, which was to make this a really dense mesh so it's super smooth. There's obviously a downside to that. Um, okay. So sorry, bear with me just one second. I got some, it did weird things, man quite sure what happened here. Again, we're looking at fractions of fractions as far as how big this space actually, or this piece actually is. So I could probably grab it all, delete it, and draw one circle to fill all this space in, and uh, it would work just fine. I think I'm actually gonna go that direction. That's, it's cr it crossed over itself right there. That was the problem. But I'll just go ahead and fix that real quick. And we'll be back in modeling business. Wow. Whew. You know... Part of me, the logical part that thinks smart things, was kind of telling me to make that dome solid a long time ago. <laughs> I told that piece to shut up and to hold on. And uh, yeah, this is what happens. A little bit of a same thing. It, it just took some geometry that was just slightly off and it just gets exaggerated a little bit. You know what? I'll just, I'm taking all of you out. All right, I'm gonna mess with this anymore. Uh, I'm gonna, it's time to make this thing work whether it wants to or not. I'm in charge. Oh, look at that. See, there's a little tiny, little teeny tiny step there. I do like joint push pull, but I do also find like I spend a lot of time cleaning up when I use it on complex, shape, complex shapes. This is probably where I should turn on hidden too. And then I can see, yeah, look, see nice ordered mesh, nice ordered mesh, and then because of this little hiccup right here, not even a big hiccup, a teeny tiny hiccup, uh, I ended up with this weirdness that I gotta come stitch together. Okay, 
Anyhow. Okay, let's let's finish this dome off. You know, I'm not gonna mess with that anymore because I'm gonna just gonna create some geometry right now. It's gonna take a chunk out of that, hopefully. Anyways, um, oh, let's do this real quick too. Take all of this, join, push, pull this. One point two five feet. Yeah, this is why I was I was worried about this not playing well with joint push pull. What, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get rid of these pieces right here. Just take that piece. 1.25 feet. Right, so that looks good. This is looking good. Um, what I want to do now, how can I get that arc? Um, I want to select that. I want to just get this line right here and copy it. So what I'm going to do is I double click this surface, double click this surface, and now I'll shift minus select everything that is not that arc. Sometimes it's easier to select stuff and then unselect it rather than trying to go in there and select all the little chunks that make up that line. All right, so with that line selected, I'm going to control C, exit out, edit, paste in place. So now I have this line right here. And actually, I don't need, there's some extra lines there. I'm going to weld it right now before I do anything else. All right. We've reached that point where Aaron starts mumbling to himself pretty regularly. <laughs> Must be two o'clock. Not far off. All right. I'm going to unhide all. I'm going to come in here with a circle. All right. I'm going to take this line now. Follow me with this circle. It's going to give me that that bead all the way around. This is actually a lot cleaner than what I had in the last model too. A little bit of cleanup to do there, a little bit of cleanup to do there. But overall, I think that's going to work pretty nice. Let's make that a solid if we can. No, it's that, that weird. This thing right here is causing problems. Sometimes what ends up happening is your arc is too small to make turns, so the geometry ends up overlapping itself. What we can do to fix it, if we look at it from the inside, you can kind of see the pieces that are crossing over each other. Generally speaking, if I select it all, intersect face with selection, it'll find where those, those faces overlap each other, cut them, and then it's pretty easy to clean up the overlapping geometry. That's the theory anyhow. I'm getting some really dense and ugly meshes at this point though. Nope, that is not what happened. That means what happened instead was instead of them overlapping, they're actually just short of each other. They're not quite touching. So there's two ways of fixing this. One is a rather painful way of trying to get each of these arc pieces to line up and cross over each other, which you can do. You have to move it, move lines one at a time to cross over each other. The other option, which I'm totally making up as I do is uh, let's force this thing to cross over itself. I'll teach you. I'll teach you to be in my model. All right, so I'm going to grab that and I'm just going to use push pull to just push it into itself. I don't really even care 
That was not really the direction I wanted to go in that. Uh, um, you know what? Hold up. Back up. Let's go back into this line. Why is it having a problem at that point on the line? Let's see, let's, if I follow me around here, yeah, so if I look at this line, oops. something to do with that little line right there. I'm just curious. I'm, I, I know. I know. I'm messing with stuff right now, but just curious if look at that by fixing that one little tiny edge right there. Where is it over here? Oh, there he is. It's a little piece. If I just delete that piece and then use move to move that endpoint back in line, triple click, follow me with this. Oops, I didn't get it on that side. Got on that side. Oh, there is that little tiny one. That is so crazy. All right, anyhow. <laughs> so, yeah, fixed. Uh, soften, smooth that. Okay, so now I can actually take, hopefully, this. Solid, almost solid. Oh man, come on, <laughs> this mess at the top. Uh, so close, yet so far. Right, so I, I've had this happen before where SketchUp makes these redundant edges, or redundant faces on top of itself and it prevents uh, geometry from being solid. I don't know why it does it. I don't know how it does it. Oh my gosh. There you go. All right. What about now? Something else. Getting closer. Oh man, look at this little wedge. Come on, you kidding me? Delete, delete, delete. Oops, wrong one. Undo. That's why undo is still my favorite. All right. What about now? What do you, what do you think now, Solid Inspector? Still got issues. Oh, right here at the ears. Yeah, or that. I had a feeling this was going to be a problem. Um, it's because stuff's overlapping itself like crazy here. Uh, uh, I have some not good geometry. That's what's happening. Look at this, see? Fortunately, again, it's trying to make teeny tiny geometry where I really could just do big clunky geometry is perfectly fine. That's gonna work. Yeah, let's come back over here. You know, this is something that I, a lot of times, if, I don't know if anybody else out there ever downloads STL files, but mm -hmm. a lot of times when you download an STL file, you get a lot of geometry. And uh, I find that this is the kind of stuff that I end up cleaning up in STL files, even after I go through like merge faces and that kind of thing. 
there's still just so much uh, redundant geometry. Geometry that doesn't need to be there, like this. I know this is this is all because of my uh, joint push pull fiasco that I created for myself. A little early Christmas present from me to me. Wow, nothing coming into this corner was good. <laughs> all right. Let's try that again. Let's 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 get this thing. So the good part, part the nice part about this is if you guys are actually uh, interested in this file, when you get it, this will all be done. Won't that be nice for you? Something still not right. So I'm guessing I have extra lines. There's a teeny edge right there. This. So Perfect. I'm gonna be honest with you guys again, cause I do that. At this point I've made, and I, I realize I've done this all to myself. I have no one else to blame, but I'm probably at the point where, were you not all watching, <laughs> I would be doing some deleting and probably just start over. I would probably not try to save all of this uh, because I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing. I actually said at the beginning, I'm not gonna try to just model and then come add thickness later. I was talking about making it, modeling with thickness from the beginning, and then I forgot that I was gonna do that, and uh, here we are. So I did the same thing wrong that I did with Iron Man, basically. Um, but we still have time. We can still, we can make this work. Uh, just on the topic of someone in chat mentioning that you might be able to do this differently in another program that Yeah, you, you could probably do it in a different program, of course, but that kind of defeats the purpose of the exercise here We're trying to push SketchUp as far as it will go before right. it breaks down and causes Incredible problems that are unfixable. That's the whole point of the exercise today. That's right. We can do it I think We can do it probably <laughs> we might be able to do it. All right. That's why it's exciting. It, it, <laughs> if we knew we'd come away with a usable product every time, then it wouldn't be as fun to watch. That's right. Who doesn't like watching Aaron cry a little? <laughs> All right, so there we go. How's that? Oh. We're getting closer. That's right. I had a hidden edge right here. Oh, we're so close now. Oh, man. All right. uh, we've got someone asking, where's the other chat? Um, we stream live on three different platforms, Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. So uh, we have a program that sort of correlates all these chats together. So... Um, let me check where the uh, other person was. It looks like they were on Facebook. What? What are we looking at now? Just another little line somewhere? A little chunk of line floating out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you just, now, you're just messing with me. Yes, All right. we did it. It's, it is a solid, and a solid, okay. We are getting No there. problem. All right, I'm going to take these two now. I'm going to save. An excellent idea. All right, and I'm just going to take those, and I'm just going to merge those together. Uh, solid tools. Union them. And again, I'm using solid tools, so it is going to break my component connectivity. So I will have to, once it's done, there we go. That says it's not solid anymore. I will fight you. What are you talking about? Whoa, I'm so lost. All right. All right, what is the problem here now? All right, that's an easy fix. All right. 
So it didn't, for whatever reason, it didn't remove all of my faces. That's very curious. But I know how to fix that. Nope, nope, too much, too much, too much deleting. There we go. <laughs> All right. So break that. boy. There we go. Delete. All right. Oh, that's, that's not a face. <laughs> cool. That was better than I thought. Ah, the twi someone wants a link to Twitch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that to them. One moment. I'm sorry I didn't see your request at first. What the? Okay, so now now I know somebody's messing with me. I have new holes in my helmet. So I may, despite being, have, despite having scaled up, uh, I may actually at this point, it may benefit me to scale up again. Uh, so here's the link to Twitch. Uh, just here you go. All right, so there's my two pieces. Whew. All right, I lost, I lost my ridge after all that. Oh, man, I did that in a specific way because I was trying not to lose this geometry. But I think I can, I think I can salvage that. Unsoft and smooth that. All right, I want to draw my mohawk on here and then call this thing done because I'm upset with it right now. All right. Something like that. I'm going to actually exaggerate this just a little bit for the sake of uh, making this readable once it's done. So I'm going to kind of do something like this. How do we use this? I don't know how that's going to print, but we'll go with that. All right, so there is my profile. I'll grab a copy of that. I'm going to bring it over here. Stick it right here. Gonna have to wonder if that'll be deep enough. We'll take this and make it just a touch deeper. All right. And now No, I should do this twice, shouldn't I? Yes. So take this this from here and make a copy of it put it right here so on this point on this uh, section I'm just gonna grab this line and say follow me with this surface Okay. Then go ahead and 
join those two together. So now I can grab, actually I can take this. Whoops, nope, hold up, hold up. Grab all of that, follow me, edit group, follow me with this shape. Sweet. Um, I'm going to go in here and push, just use regular push pull to make it a little bit longer so that dies into here. And there's actually another piece of geometry right there because the end comes in. So I'm actually going to make that a little bit different. Um, let's see, how do I want to do that? That's a question. Uh, quickly, that's how I want to do this. I look at my reference photo again. So I got it, the middle kind of goes like that, and then all right, good, good to go. I can do that. So I'm just going to do something like this. Maybe knock the edges off just ever so slightly. Uh, push that back. So again, we're working in a flat right now in what will end up being kind of a round surface, but again, we're, s we're dealing with something fairly small, so it should work out okay. Should. So something like that, and then say right here all right cool is there a break here there is a break here okay so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this and this. So I'm going to go around. This is where the segment is actually, it's actually changing. This is where the, it worked around the follow me. And I'm going to get rid of all of this. Oops, I didn't, I didn't trace that. I have to trace my valley there. that cool that's fine because this actually comes up that should be flat like that anyhow uh -oh. oh it's just that was that was on me I was, didn't oh. didn't click where I was supposed to click thank goodness it was something simple yeah <laughs> speaking of uh, things possibly going wrong uh, chat suggests we save that's probably a good idea I agree I, I think you guys are onto something there. All right, I'm going to take that and I'm going to pull it out to this line. Oh, yeah. Take that and move it. There we go. Move it out to that line. And then that cuts back just slightly on the corners as well. Actually, how does that cut back? So here's our angle. That's about there. Okay. We come back like that. Try to drag that straight across. There we go. And just delete that off there. And because I got I got that whole double angle thing miter deal going there. Uh, so I'm again, oops, came off axis there.
Um, so as I was saying, because that's slightly off angle, I do have to do this again. Uh, I have an, not a flat face, but again, not worth fixing for this because that's how it's going to go. All right, now. Going to show the rest of my model. Grab that piece. That we're going forward. Just a bit. I'm cheating this a little bit to make it all line up like I think it should. Down, forward. I'm just constraining my movements on the axes to get that out there. I want to get it lapping on ever so slightly. My, my dimensions aren't quite beautiful as I would like with this. I'm a little bit off, but uh, I'm kind of, I'm sculpting again as I tend to do when all else fails. Not that anything failed. It didn't fail. We're not failed. Yeah. All right, that was pretty cool. Um, whoops, I did something very bad back here. <laughs> huh, it's a cool shape, but uh, not what I want my, my helmet to look like. It's not quite what we're looking for. <laughs> oh man. I honestly don't even know how I did that one. Wow, that is weird. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a little sanding on that once it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fair so a little clean up there. Let's get the face on this thing. Whew. All right, this is the coolest part. This is the part that I'm actually like excited to do. All that other stuff was garbage and I hated it. No, not really. <laughs> Let's clean this up real quick. Here's our line. All right, so. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to model half this mask. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. This is going to be very Iron Man y. Come to the middle. I only want to model this once if I can help it. And I'm going to draw a Bezier curve here. I'm going to come from here to here. It's going to come up and then it's going to come. I think there's even a point in the uh, Iron Man mask where I said, this kind of feels like Boba Fett. Who knew that it was only a matter of time before 
I know the Boba Fett and the Mandalorian are two different people, but you, you get my you get my drift there. It's really coming full circle for us here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So there's one piece. Here is another piece. And then here's a piece. Okay, so. Oh, that's so cool. I love it. All right. I need to. I might make a copy of this. Forgive me if my modeling process is haphazard. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so. If we knew what we were doing, this, that wouldn't be as fun. That's right. See, watching Aaron injure himself. It's like that, you know, watching America's Funniest Home Video, because those just basically <laughs> dudes getting hit in the crotch with stuff. Same concept here. All right, so that is I'm looking at that helmet from the front. So now I gotta model that same thing off of that same geometry. So I'll grab this line, pull it straight out, because I want I want those to line up. Grab this and pull it out. Drop flat here. So this is where I'm starting to make my uh, my cage for my uh, because uh, I want it to line up properly. I want these lines to all connect correctly. So I'm kind of ignoring the exact dimensions and using these as just sort of references, but I think it's all going to work out just fine eventually. So that's that side. This actually goes up a little bit, and then I'm going to have to do this as two curves. So do one straight across like this, where I go up, and start to go this way. I'll pick up another curve from that point, and I want to get a little bit of depth right here. So we'll just go on the purple or er, magenta axes, and then. That's quite the curve. All right. Magenta axes, I pulled out a little too far last time, I think. There we go. So that's. Connect. There we go. And that piece actually, this is nice. That piece actually goes back because this is this is the piece that we only have to tie this piece into the helmet. I don't have to worry about these curves over here connecting to the helmet also. That's actually a little bit of a relief. All right, and now 
regular arc there. Single line there. And then one more, one last, probably not last, Bezier curve. Get rid of these lines that connect everything together. We don't need those anymore. Uh, all right, and now I'll take this guy and put him right here. Let's work on this in a vertical fashion. I want to put it like this. I'm not really, again, not really sure I'm doing still. <laughs> At least I'm consistent <laughs> in that. Right. Um, okay, so I want this. This piece go right here. This piece should go to here. All right, so looking at it from the front, that's what I need to create. This is kind of cool because I, I, I'll end up with a little bit of play here in the front too to make the two halves connect. That's nice. Um, then this piece right here should go right here, and then I'll have to rotate it. Nope, wrong guy. Wrong, wrong piece there. So this piece will come out to here. In that too, and cut that like that. All right, super. Now, uh, we've got a quick question in chat. If you have a minute, let's do that. Um, the Bezier curve tool is that an extension? Uh, yes, it is. And I can get you a link to it if you want. Absolutely. Yeah, Bezier is a great tool. It's actually from uh, the SketchUp team. So it's, it's one of those, what we'd call a native extension. It's a very neat tool. It takes a little practice to get it right, though. It does. And it, it, it's probably the easiest of the Bezier tools out there. There's actually a handful of them. Um, some of the other ones are actually a little more powerful. Because you can actually, uh, you can create things like uh, Bezier curves that you can come back and edit later, which is pretty helpful. That's a pr pretty nice option to have. Um, whereas this Bezier curve is pretty simple. It gives you control, basically two handles that you can pick like this. Just draw your two lines, and that's it. It is simple, though. Simple is, it can be very nice. That doesn't look like it was flat at all. all right, I'm going to go to this point and draw, draw me a rectangle to work off of. Just a quick work plane. All right, why is everything so not what I want it to be? Uh, let's find the bottom of this little arc here, this round thing. All right. All right, there's the middle. So I'm going to 
to draw a rectangle based off of. Oh, give me the intersection back. There we go. That point right there. Oh, I'm. Come on, guys. You're supposed to be paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm in context <laughs> of this weird thing. That's why nothing's lining up and nothing's flat. <sighs> Fine. I'll take responsibility for my own actions. <laughs> Well, at least we made uh, Alexander's day by getting him the extension. So hey. we got that going for us. That's, <laughs> that's I, awesome. I also apologize if I got your name wrong. I tend to do that a lot. It happens. When you're, uh, when you're dealing with the Internet, can't be too, too upset about people mispronouncing your name, you know? So I'm just going to get a new Bezier curve in here for the top of my helmet. All right, and I'm going to hide this. Okay, so there's my lines. Okay, now <laughs> uh, let's start. I'm going to start just piecemealing this thing together. I'm going to. I'm going to vertically adibio that little piece there. And then I'm going to grab this, these two pieces, and this piece, and this piece, and this piece, and then push pull that one straight down also. Oops, missed one. And now I'm going to grab all of this, take that, and drop that down to here. Whoops, that could have gone better. There, I'll go back to a DBO. All right, so first part of my visor right there. Uh, now I have to. this down. I'm not sure how to so I'll do the same thing. Right now, I'm just gonna pull this piece. Nope, wrong button. This guy straight down to its lowest point. Just blocking things in right now. Okay. That looks cool. Um, this will have to come out though. If I move it now, it's gonna, that'll work. Like that. Um, I gotta bring this out. So, let's start to use this. What I really need is I need to come in here, push pull this through like this so I can get my arc here. Sorry, I know I'm making a huge mess right now. But I promise to pick up as soon as I'm done playing. So I'm going to take all of that, push it straight down, well, I guess all the way down as well. And then, 
Woods. So that gives me a plane that I can cut. Maybe. Okay, I can work with that. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna break that plane though, because I don't want to break the whole thing. Take that and say intersect that. with model, push this back. Whoops. All right, cool. Back where it needs to be. So what I really want to get here is I want to get this line right here, this line right here, but I, I feel like I'm doing something dumb right now. Oh, it's back. We have a second question about the device that's on the left side of the keyboard. This right here is my 3D mouse. It is a uh, Space Mouse Enterprise from 3D Connection. Allows me to move nice and smooth in 3D space. I'm going to go ahead and post a link to that again. Casey's got the link. It's a great product, but as always, not necessary for SketchUp. Yeah. But if you're looking to up your game, I uh, wouldn't say not to get one. Absolutely. That's uh, a great way to put it. All right. I got to reboot here because I feel like I'm, I'm doing something stupid. Uh, all right, let me make this into a group. I'm going to do a So if I look at, this is what I want to create, is the, where these two come together. So I should be able to, we'll start by rotating this piece to here, and this piece to here. So what am I still missing? This is the cheek piece, this goes in, it's backwards, but that shouldn't matter. All right, so I'm gonna try to this point over to here I'm going to take this point over to here I think that gets me what I want. It doesn't look right for some reason though. Still not. I'm gonna skin it and just see what happens. I don't think this is right though. I don't feel like I've nailed that. Uh, curve lock. Hmm. 
doesn't look like that piece. Even if I rotate it. Still doesn't. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Back up, back up. I feel like I need to go back and watch the Iron Man video because this is basically what we did again and again and again, but for whatever reason, I'm just not... Oh. Hold up, I gotta, first thing I gotta do is I gotta, this was multiple pieces, so I need to weld that together. Put this point in to there. I'm not too worried about the surfaces, but I do want to make sure I get my lines in correct. This one right here is going to move along this axis to where that is. That's getting better. All right, now this arc right here, it's coming back to me, guys. Oh, that was painful. Uh, we got someone in chat saying, wow, this looks really hard, and I can agree with you 100%. <laughs> this does look really hard. <laughs> I apologize. I, I totally have, like, uh, forgot how, what I was even doing. I'm, I feel like I've lost my mind a little bit here. Um, We're ending up with something that's really cool, though. Maybe? Don't be promising something for me, Casey, because I might just drop the ball. I said ending up with. Oh, uh, we'll see. I, I never said when we would end up that's with true. that. That's <laughs> true. Uh, man. Yeah, this, this, this was actually a lot easier. I just don't quite remember how I did what I did. Whew. Okay. There we go. I think that's it. Man. I'm embarrassed by me. Uh, you're doing fine. We're getting there. We're going to end up with something cool at the end here. <laughs> Whether or not it's done is uh, another story. But we're ending up with something cool either way. Something is going to happen. <laughs> oh, man. So that's what we've got. A little bit of fixing to happen there. Wow, man, you know, you ever just have one of those things where you're like, I, I, don't, even, I don't even know how to describe what just happened. <laughs> like I forgot everything, how everything works. I don't know. All right. I'm going to get some arcs in here. I'm going to connect them together. They're not going to be in the right spot to begin with. But once all my geometry is connected, I think I can start to move some things around. Maybe not. Maybe I'm making an even bigger mess. But man, yeah, this is, this is something. All right, let's see. Can I scan that? All right. 
So that is getting closer. This line right here, push that straight down again. Ah, yes, someone in chat just suggested a reason why we're having this sort of difficulty today. It's Friday the 13th, of course. You know, <laughs> it's funny you say that. I don't subscribe to superstition, but there was a point where I was like, Hmm, maybe we shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that makes perfect sense now. There we go. We've also got someone in chat asking um, if we have any recommendations for doing roof tiles. In I SketchUp. would say get a good texture. Ah. Um, that is some pretty good advice. You can save a lot of time using good textures. Right. Uh, the problem with not using a texture, which of course is totally doable, you can do it, uh, but what you will often end up with is a mess, too much geometry. Um, if you model every tile, especially if you get into like a Spanish tile or something like that, you can end up with just thousands of faces, millions of faces. Um, so if possible, it's nice to be able to do that with just a texture and not have to mess with, there we go. Whew. All right, we're getting towards something. Something is happening right now. <laughs> this is the part that I was excited about. <laughs> that up in a second all right this is it's coming together believe it or not guys it's actually coming together oh man Casey has faith that it's gonna be cool in the end though so oh it's already been cool watching this whole process it's go, just a question point. of whether or not we're gonna end up with something printable before the uh, before the session is done. That's true. Something will get printed. I, that That's definitely going to happen. All right. Cool. Cool. Okay. Cool. This I actually want to get rid of now because that was not the piece. Getting closer to the piece. Whoa. That twist obviously isn't supposed to be there. That's not cool. That's not Mandalorian-y. All right, but that's okay too. I'm actually gonna take that out because I actually want something more like this. Why did that twist it? Actually, something's not right down here either. Okay, here we go. We'll do something kind of like it's pointing back there. That's perfect. All right, we don't need this line here. We don't need any more. I feel like there's a light at the end of this tunnel, you guys. All right. So now I got to get this. I want to get this line. Actually, I'll just redraw this line. Nope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to save it, weld that back up. Uh, we've got another question in chat. Is it true that you can polish your SketchUp models forever, always finding little things you can correct? 
I have always found that to be the case. Me too. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say yes. <laughs> we'll verify it, verify it as fact right here, Friday afternoon. Yes. <laughs> Never stop polishing. All right. Okay, we're getting there. The only thing I really want to clean up right here is this. Um, Think if I can, and just this is all vertical right now. So I think I could actually just come in here, kind of hand sketch this thing back to where I want it. Like this either. This this breaks a little too abrupt. So I'm gonna do kind of come in here, do something like that. All right. That's okay. Oop, I hit a button. I don't know what that button was I hit. And clean this up a little bit more. Let's try and get a nice, soft, smooth arc on this plate. All right, with that, I'm gonna stop messing with this. I'm gonna go put some new uh, curves on here. The other thing I do need to do, um, is I'm gonna have to re redo this because one of the things I did, I lost was my little, uh, it goes straight down instead of coming out. So I think if I just grab this geometry down at the bottom, this and this and this, I think I could move that forward, uh-oh. Got a thing going on there. Hold up, let's zoom in here. There we go. I have to, have to do some quick welding. This I can get rid of. All that. Man. Stupid Friday. I'm gonna. I like that. I'm totally blaming Friday the Thirteenth on everything that didn't <laughs> go well. Next time I have an opportunity to model on Friday the Thirteenth, I'll say no. So well, that. That's one. There's a troublemaker. Weld that. Now we got one piece. This is one piece. This needs to be. Welded. This is a vertical piece. Oh, that's not even well. That's. Weld that. That was welded. This is welded, this is welded. All right, so now I should be able to grab these pieces and take them forward. Cool. All right, that's good. So now, do some last lofts. Grab this line, this one, this little guy right here, and this. Loft that looks good. Oops, it looks good. Looks good. Okay, there we go. Now we're good. This one, this one, this one. Loft that. Also good. This one, this one. Whoops. 
a chunk missing there. This one. This little piece there. Hmm. Something tells me something's not right with this thing. A little underbaked. Something's not. Oh, here's what I, I did this wrong. Undo a couple times. This line right here is supposed to go right here. So I draw a line to break it. And I can move from this point move it. Sometimes you'll get geometry that doesn't want to move exactly where you want to put it. Uh, when that happens to me, I move it piecemeal. So I, I will get uh, move it in the X, move it in the Y, move it in the Z, just constrain it and then get it to where I want it to be. Or that brute force modeling we talk about sometimes. All right, so now these four edges lock that. And now this this oh. All right, that looks good. Weld that back together. This piece, this piece, this piece. Uh, this piece and this piece. Does that look better? Still looks a little weird. Let me see how. Hmm, it's doing some weirdness. I don't like that. Um, as with Iron Man, sometimes. We ended up having to get some kind of control pieces in here. Let's see if that does it for us. I grab these three pieces and now say loft that. That looks good. And now I could probably grab this, this. I know there's ways with curve loft too to go through and fine tune your lofting surfaces, but I've never spend enough time with it to really get good at making that happen. Um, I don't like that. It goes in flat on the inside there. I don't like that. Uh, not to make that come out. All right, so if I look at this piece right here, I don't want it flat. I actually want a little bit of a bulge on it. So I wonder if I can just use an arc to go here to here just pull out ever so slightly. I wonder if that's enough. No, that went vertically. Try that again. Go from here to here. Yeah, that might work. Let's try it. I have no idea if it's going to work. I'll grab these lines. Uh, oh, there we go. That's the stuff. That turned out way better than I was expecting. This little guy who did not want to weld. Right, let's see if that works as well. Oh, we are in business. Look at that. That is all man all kinds of Mandalorian y. That looks incredible. Okay, Casey was right. I was doubting. I was doubtful. I totally I did not have the faith. <laughs> Casey kept the faith. Oh, um, all right. So this, uh, this loft is going the wrong way. It's poking out rather than going in, but I think we can fix that. Uh, we've got a question again about the device in your left hand. This right here is my 3D mouse. It is a Space Mouse Enterprise from a company called 3D Connection. It is, as we keep, as we, we tend to say, not a requirement for running SketchUp by any means. You can run SketchUp all day long, and most people do, using just a normal three-button mouse. What this allows me to do is move smoothly in 3D space, which is great for things like uh, software demonstrations, um, or if you really want to up your game and take your, your 3D modeling to the next level, it's, it's a nice option to consider.
If you're interested in getting one, I'm going to go ahead and post a link in the chat so you can check out their website. I need to get a vendor link, all the people I send over there. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. I still feel like this is bulging out rather than going in. You see what I'm talking about there? I think I might be able to fix that with this. Because this was, is this a single surface? It was. All right, so I think if I put a teeny bit, just a bit of around this here, I think if I do that, I think that will push my arc in where it needs to go. Let's try that. Mm, I missed a piece. Whew, that was not it. Okay, let's try it one more time. <laughs> Behind that. There we go. That's better. There we got it. Same thing here. Hmm. Okay, this one's still not perfect. I know perfection. I know, I know. But I want to just, I want to try. If I put a little bit of roundness there too, I think that <clears throat> oh that's okay so there's something <laughs> something's weird <laughs> all right i believe all right i think the thing that's happening it's this arc right here. This arc is coming way out rather than laying back inside, which is what it's supposed to do. I'm sure, once again, you guys probably already spotted it. You knew it was happening. And uh, said something like, let's see how long it takes him to figure that one out. <laughs> See if this is the way, huh? All right, that looked, ooh, yeah. I'm much happier with that, I think. Yeah, cool. All right, let's, let's do some exploding. Look at how the, all those edges, every edge came together. I mean, and every edge came together. <laughs> totally knew that was going to happen. Uh, let's orient faces. Let's erase that one because that should be there. There's no shade. Yeah. All right. And now... I do need, I do need coffee. You know what? I have, <laughs> I agree. I should totally have that, but I didn't, I don't. All right, let's snap those two together. That feels better. All right, I'm gonna make these two, actually, I don't know if I make these two group. All right, so now um, I know I need to put depth onto these. Are these components? I want to convert these into components. Um, all right, 
let's do a real quick, let's add, add some depth to it real quick. Um, joint push pull it. 1.25 feet. That figures. <laughs> All right, I will come back and I will make that. I will. I'll, I'll get that. Don't don't stress about that. I'll, I'll make get that get that in there. Um, my, what I'm curious about right now is what I'm going to have to do to make this 3D printable. So I have all the pieces that I need. I have the dome. I have the mohawk. I have the cowl. I have the mask now. The mask is in two separate pieces, but that's okay, I think, because I think I'm going to need to break it up anyhow. And I have the ears. So what I want to look at is... Come over here and put this into my print bed and see if it's going to fit. No! Hold up, hold up. Okay, so my it's dome tight. <laughs> just, will just fit. That's awesome. Let's actually don't need faces on here. The cowl, let's see, I'll grab this. And what I'm thinking for this, what I'll probably do is print it upside down like that. So there's my flat on the bed. All right, no problem. That'll print good. I could probably even print that without support. I think that's a that's definitely a gradual enough uh, shape there that I think that will work just fine. The mask. This is this is the part that I'm not sure about because I I would want to do the same thing here where I print it upside down like this. Let's see if it'll fit on his. Oh man, no problem. Wait, so I can make that one piece rather than two. The ears are no problem. I got to model up this little thing in the back plate real quick. No problem. Um, let's see what happens if I explode. All right, and if I take all of that So close. Uh, we've got a question in chat from someone who says they're new to our live streamings, and do we have any suggestions for where a beginner should start? Absolutely. So on our website, we have a thing that we call SketchUp Campus. If you go, uh, go on to our website, if you go to the learn tab or just type in learn.sketchup.com you can get to what we call the SketchUp Campus and what SketchUp Campus is is a way to it's a great way to learn SketchUp from scratch it is an online set of tutorials that will walk you through the process of modeling in SketchUp. So from, from absolutely, I've never even used it before, all the way up to, you know, now you know what all the tools are and you're ready for your intermediate training. Um, it's, it really is, it's, it's a hard, it's probably the best way to learn SketchUp if you're starting from scratch. Uh, we do have a getting started set of videos. I don't know if you've seen those before. Very, very, very basic, I think. It's on our YouTube and you can go, go look at the getting started videos. It's like an hour. And that's super high level. That's like, I don't know, I guess you just installed it and you want to know what this thing you just installed is. Um, that's a great way to learn too, but Campus is actually nice because you can take courses, you can take one class at a time, they'll focus on one thing, and you run that along, it's, it's kind of paced with you, so you actually work alongside the video that's playing. So really good, can't, can't recommend using Campus enough. And I'm not saying that because it's mine, it's actually not my project. <laughs> it's not my product. Um, we have a couple guys here, Eric and Tyson, who make that, and 
like I said, it's just, it is a great way. It's a great uh, introduction to SketchUp. Uh, they also wanted to say that they really enjoy our work, which is great. Even today? <laughs> Don't be offended if you say, usually enjoy your work. Oops. Yeah, they say they really enjoy it, so it's oh, great. Thanks. So thank you. We enjoy having you in the audience. All right. I think I have figured out what the problem is. Little cheek parts I could do, it's having a problem with the visor for some reason. So let's see if I do it as two separate pieces and just overlap them if I can get that to work. One point, point, ah, <laughs> point two five feet. No, does not like the visor. He doesn't like something about it. Oops. So I'll keep those part thickened. And I'll come in and break this portion into smaller pieces. All right, so let's try just this piece. That worked. Okay, so I like that part. <laughs> I'll do a piecemeal. I don't care. I'm not proud. Okay. That piece worked okay. Let's try this whole thing just for fun. Okay. Ooh. Wait. Definitely got a, an issue. It's got an issue There's there. There's a hole here. It's, it's doing something weird. But I don't care anymore, so <laughs> I will make this thing work whether it wants to or not. Um, Go. That's closed. <laughs> that could, it's unfortunately it's not so something was wrong over there. I don't know what that was. All right, but anyhow, I have a three D mesh. Uh, so this will likely come out of the printer. Um, so that one will explode. Um, last piece, this piece right here. Uh, yeah, the the extension I'm using to push pull is called joint push pull. Wah, wah. That's not going to work. All right. Um, I need to draw up real quick my little, little piece that's going to go back here. Uh, we've got a couple questions in chat. Um, First off, they say this is fascinating work. So thank you for the compliment. Uh, will we see the 3D printed version of it today too? Uh, the answer to that is probably not, given uh, that we're almost at our end of our time today. And uh, it does take a while for these things to print, but we might be able to see it in the future, right? I hope that, I mean, yes, you, the first part was absolutely correct. This won't happen today. Um, 
but I am hoping that we can uh, get this printed by next week and oh, that would be fantastic. Absolutely get it in here and let you guys see how it turned out. That I'll would be actually I'll I'll probably oh, depending on how you guys feel about me by the end of this, you may not want to take part in this. But um, <laughs> I will uh, probably spend some time on my own getting this thing uh, printed out. So if you do want to see any of that, uh, my Instagram is Aaron Making Stuff. So if you do want to come see what this looks like as it comes off the printer and maybe some how it gets glued together, that kind of thing. You can head over there, and, and uh, I'll I'll show what I'm what I'm doing there if you guys want to see that. And uh, we've also got a request for a link to the joint push pull extension. Uh, the extension warehouse is having a little trouble right now, so I'm just going to link you on Sketchication. It should be the exact same files, and it should just work the exact same way. So here you go. Just tracing this this thing right here. I'm gonna come over here. And make this a group. I'm gonna bring this in and I'm gonna scale it. Get that right there. Oh, hey. Wow. That was a solid ballpark right there. Look at that. <laughs> um, I mean as I expected. All right. I'm gonna, mm, okay, so here's. Unfortunately, everything is out of plane on this helmet, so. I'm going to call this a fin. I don't know what this thing is, but slide it up this line. Give it a little bit of depth. going to um, do we have uh, your Instagram one more time it's uh, Aaron yeah. making stuff. Aaron making stuff but you never guess what I do on there how many of these are there? One, two, three, four, five, and then one disappears up in the top, so. Uh, and we have a question. Is it possible to print using a CNC machine? Well, it's not um, printing, it's cutting, but yes, that is a thing you can do uh, for it, sure. Yeah, it's a slightly different process with a 3D printer, but some of the knowledge required to operate one is similar. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of hard to explain in the time we've got left. Um, 3D printing works on a, what's called additive manufacturing. Uh, CNC kind of works on the opposite, if I recall correctly. I think it's called subtractive. Yes. A, uh, in 3D printing, you're cutting. You're pulling material out. In, or wait, in CNC. <laughs> In CNC, you're pulling material out in uh, 3D printing, you're actually building material up. So very similar. It actually uses the same uh, code called G-code. Um, so a lot of it is very, very similar. Now let's see if we can get in this. At the end of the day, it is a slightly different process, though, so you are going to need some expert knowledge if uh, you've never 3D printed something before. There are a lot of great tutorials uh, on a whole lot of different websites. I like YouTube, personally. You can learn just about anything there. YouTube's awesome. Oh, yeah. It's say. really lowered the barrier to entry for so many complicated, difficult-to-learn processes.
All right, so I'm just trying to make these, this whole thin array into one solid. And once I get uh, that done. We've got a couple more questions. Um, can, is it okay if I link your Instagram account in chat? Sure, that's fine with me, yeah. All right, and the second question is, uh, is the next project gonna be the Millennium Falcon? <laughs> well, funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, the actually the very first thing we ever did on this channel was the Millennium Falcon. And we did it over a period of three sessions. I don't think there, I don't remember if there were three hour sessions, I don't know if anybody's around from back then. Uh, but we did do them and they were rough. They were long. They were, I mean, that's a big model. It's a tough one to, to do. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, uh, we, we did kind of do them and, and we made something, but uh, it, like I said, it took a long time and eventually after three sessions, everybody went, let's do something else, which is cool. And then since then we have uh, really tried to focus on models that we could finish in one session. Um, hold up. I gotta bask for just a second. Yeah, I think we've got something here. <sighs> I was doubtful for a little while there, but uh, I think, let me get rid of some of this stuff, get out of my way. I think I just made the Mandalorian's helmet. I think we're, we're at that spot. Um, <coughs> all right, there is, it's not done done. Done, done, done. Um, there is some pieces that aren't 100%, uh, but I think this is enough to be printed. So a lot of times, so when I get to this point, I kind of, this is where I have to ask myself, how much post work am I okay with doing? Um, I find that question is directly proportional to how much hobby equipment you have at home. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so how much stuff do I want to go through and sand and file versus how much do I want to be just perfect right off the bat? Um, and that's really, that. Like, like Casey just said, that depends on the person. That's, uh, I don't love sanding. I don't think anybody loves sanding. But uh, I'm just curious how close this could be to being... Oh, so close. It is pretty close. Just a little too tall. You could probably turn it so it almost fits on the bed. Whoops, I grabbed some lines here. Get out of your lines. <laughs> All right. This has been fun. So, uh oh. Uh oh. Make this a group. Now grab all of this. I'm just curious. I know I, I'm not going to print this. Have you ever seen that guy at the channel, the 3D Printing Nerd? Uh, no, I'm not familiar. I'll have to look it up. He, I don't know what printer he has, but he prints full-size helmets on a regular basis. And, and, oh, that's uh, awesome. And he does his prints take, you know, days. But this is actually pretty... Close to fitting. Uh, we've got a comment in chat. Uh, model looks great. A lot of respect. So hey, thank thanks. you. I, I just sat here and uh, watched the chat log. Uh, it's all Aaron who's doing this. <laughs> also important, don't sell yourself short. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, it's. I think you guys will all agree. It's it's definitely better to have Casey here <laughs> than. Uh, well, I'm happy to be here. Wait for me to. Yeah, okay, so that's not gonna happen. But I was just curious. Um, but we do have, most of this will be, so this is our giant version, so I'm gonna slide that over because right down here, as we zoom in, this is our scale version. So this is actually what will get uh, sent in pieces 
over to the printer. Um, here for one sec, Mark. Whoa. Yeah, well, that kind of works. Yeah, well, that looks pretty good. We just need some armor to go with it. That's right. And uh, according to the rules of the Mandalorian, you can now never take this off, Mark. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Yeah, we've got a question. Uh, what oh. kind of uh, printer do, are we going to be using? So for this, we have a couple of printers. The The biggest one we have is the Lulzbot Taz. Um, it is. I believe it's the Taz 6. Taz 6, yes. Uh, it is a big... It's got a big bed. That's why That's why I was checking this. It's almost one foot by one foot, so lots of room to, to print this. Um, so that will be, it will be spending some time though. This is definitely not gonna be a quick print. These these three pieces, the top, the cowl, and the, the face mask are gonna take some hours. Those are gonna be printing for, you know, those will be overnight prints. Ah, we have a recommendation from chat. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Command S? Good guess. You are correct. <laughs> I'm going to post a link to the Lulzbot site uh, in case you're curious about the printer that we're going to be using. Yeah, it uh, is. It's a very cool Fair warning. Cool they're, they're high-end for consumer models, so they do have a high-end price tag. But they are getting cheaper all the time, so do keep an eye on Lulzbot. They're going places. Yeah, it's definitely a cool... Cool company. They they do make some some good products that we like to use. Um, yeah, the, their uh, manufacturing process is amazing. They they just three D print certain parts, so they have a whole bay of their <laughs> printers just going printing more printers. They actually and do they do they still they based off of the rip wrap the they used to have their plans on the line right? You yeah, I know go they used print to print yourself a Lulzbot printer. They used to have an open source design. I don't know if they still do, but I'm sure you can find the schematics for one of their earlier open source design somewhere if you're willing to do a little searching around. Yeah, so look, look for that. I know uh, their software is open source still. Yeah, you can get Cura for, or no. Uh, yeah, it's Cura. The, the, there is, yeah, they use Cura. So they, they distribute their printer profiles for Cura. You can just grab one of those and any any copy of Cura to use. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a neat, definitely a neat uh, piece of hardware. The, the fact that anybody could use it, it's, anybody could build it, pretty cool. Um, all right, well, honestly, I got a little bit of cleanup to do here because I am going to try to uh, intersect so that this ear will actually drop into these pieces, but uh, that may happen it's after the good. weekend. <laughs> that may be like, maybe tomorrow morning I'll, I'll have my coffee and spend time on that. Uh, I generally feel three, three and a half hours is about the most amount of time I want to spend on a model. It's time to step away a little bit. It's also Friday afternoon. It's Friday evening or maybe even Saturday morning in some, some places. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so that is that. So I, I got to throw this out too. Um, so we have a big break coming up. We won't be, because of the way the holidays fall, um, I'm not going to be in here the Friday after Christmas or the Friday after New Year's. So two weeks of no live. Hope you guys can can handle that. Maybe you can go back and watch some recorded video or something. <laughs> um, and actually, I was thinking about that. The version we did of the Millennium Falcon, that was actually done streamed on Twitch. And Twitch only saves the video for a little while. I think I, <laughs> Lawrence Cuthbert... <laughs> Just called me a wimp and told me to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Back off, man. It's Friday afternoon. Um, uh, actually, if you look at our YouTube channel, we may have recorded and posted that. So if you are interested in seeing the Millennium Falcon, you can see it there. The other thing I just want to throw that out, too, I did kind of as a fun side project. I went through and modeled all the Lego pieces in the big Millennium Falcon and actually shared that file on 3D Warehouse. If you go look for Lego Millennium Falcon on 3D Warehouse, it's too big to post by itself. It was posted as four separate files on the warehouse, but you can download them all, import them into the same model, and you could actually have the 700 and 
7,600 something piece uh, Lego Millennium Falcon in Lego. So that's an option. It's kind of ironic that some assembly is required for a Lego file. <laughs> How about that? But uh, we will be back here next week. At least I will. I don't know. We'll see. You know when you have a long, long vacation coming up, people tend to duck out early, get a jump on that vacation? I have a feeling that's going to happen. There may not be a whole lot of people in the office <laughs> come Friday afternoon. Um, but I'll be here. I don't specifically have something to model at this point. I have a couple of ideas. I actually have a couple spots where people have, have kind of challenged me with smaller models. So I may actually pull together a couple of those and uh, model those, just kind of be fun, loose, uh, enjoyable. I don't know how many people are going to be on vacation there. I know we're not the only ones who duck out a little early. So uh, I'm not sure how many people will be even have available to watch us model whatever it is we model. But as always, love to hear your ideas, your thoughts. Um, I will get this further cleaned up, like I said, and this will sooner or later end up on the 3D Warehouse. Before it goes to the 3D Warehouse, it's going to go to our printer. Uh, I'd like to work out any printing problems if possible before I do that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what we got going. So as always, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Thanks for uh, watching me stub my brain multiple times. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Seriously, like I, I totally blanked on this was the part that I was so excited to do because this is the cool part of the helmet. If you've seen the show, you know that because it's that kind of reflective gunmetal silver, it just, it's, it's beautiful. It's a, it's just a cool looking uh, piece of cool looking prop. I was so stoked about that. It, when, when it came time to go, I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so disappointed in myself. Uh, but uh, yeah, hey, thanks for hanging out with us and watching me, watching me do that to us. Uh, hopefully you guys get to go now, be done with whatever you have to do. Have an awesome, safe weekend. Uh, we'll come back next week. Like I said, I will have, yeah, Lawrence pointed out, sometimes you get a brain fart while you're working. Fortunately, hopefully for most of you, your brain farts are isolated and you get to keep your fart to yourself. Um, only a fool would publicly brain fart and, <laughs> <laughs> and invite people to come watch it. But this is where we got to. Turned out good. It's, it's awesome. Um, so hopefully you guys have a great weekend. And thank you, like I said, for hanging out with us, watching this happen. Uh, hopefully we'll see you next weekend. Hopefully you're able to come back by next Friday. Uh, and keep an eye out. Like I said, I will try to, uh, as I spend time printing and finishing this, I'll share those images. We won't, we won't clog up the main SketchUp social, but I'm happy to throw them up on my uh, social. So keep an eye on that. And uh, yeah, other than that, I think we're done. I think we're there. We're, we're at three and a half hours. So thank you for swinging by, and hopefully we will uh, see you next week. So thank you, Casey. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm always happy to be here. Yeah, I'm glad, glad, glad you were able to be here. All right, see you guys.